Welcome to this video, a must-see video to help you with any methods questions that you might get as a 10 marker or a 20 marker on both paper one or three. This will give you an example of each method and a study that you can use to gain application marks, which is essential to get the top band. Massive thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like button if this video helps you out. Subscribe if you want to continue to see more. Comment on any questions that you might have. And remember, I am an experienced teacher and examiner, so any questions, please send them my way. So let's kick off with secondary sources. This is anything collected by the government agencies, such as the Office for National Statistics or the Census, or even departments within the government, such as the Department for Education. These will all produce official statistics. Now, you need to remember that some of these are hard statistics. That means that every instance is collected, such as the birth rate or death rate. So we know that they are measuring what they intend to measure. But some statistics are soft statistics, such as crime rate or domestic violence statistics. And these are more opt-in. For example, not everybody who is a victim will report it or even get it recorded by the police. This will lead to dark figures of crime, which will reduce the validity or the accuracy of these statistics. But the important thing with official statistics is that you are measuring trends and patterns so you can see wh whether something is increasing or decreasing. Sticking with the secondary sources, now remember these can be private or public and can include digital resources as well, such as school websites. But here are some of the popular examples as already outlined in my 10 mark video tutorial into practical problems of using documents. Link is here. Um, in a school context, on the other hand, we have got Gilborn. He used documents such as school policy documents on racism, local authority guidelines into racism and minutes of staff meetings and letters home to get an, an, an official picture of what was happening in schools. And he could then use them to compare them to interviews and observations. Other school documents include marketization documents, such as school prospectuses and school websites. And that was used by Gerwitz about how school present themselves and a massive plus with these is that they are all free. Moving on to primary research methods, now there's a range of covert studies that you could refer to. The most popular is the Patrick Gangs, which was in Glasgow, which poses loads of ethical issues of violence. We've got White with the Street Corner Society. When he left his research into the Italian emigrants, he became tongue-tied and struggled to get back to normal life at Harvard. Griffin, black like me, he changed his skin colour to experience racism in the Deep South. Humphrey the tea room trade of gay activity and men's toilets all of these pose ethical problems and can be used to illustrate them now in a school context we have got Lacey he used observations into school streaming pro school anti-school and methods like this are very time consuming you will have experienced overt observation while you were at school. School observations, Ofsted. Now, there is a problem with these is that it causes something called the Hawthorne effect. And this is where people change their behavior when they know that they're being watched. Something similar um, occurred with the semi-overt observation, which was by punch into the Amsterdam police, where he was told, we only let you see what we wanted you to see. And a final issue of any participant observation is the issue of going native, which means that you are getting involved into the group that you are studying. Questionnaires. Connor and Jusen sent 4,000 questionnaires to students at higher education institutions to uncover the factors that influence the decisions of working class students to go to university. So a pretty large sample size. You can link it to being representative. However, as found in Sher Height's piece of research, the response rate was pretty low. Only 4.5% returned out of the 100,000 questionnaires that were sent out. In the educational context, Rutter used questionnaires to collect large amounts of data from 12 inner city London secondary schools and was able to correlate with achievement and a range of factors such as school size, class size and the number of staff. To overcome the low response rate of questionnaires, structured interviews was used by Wilmot and Young. This had a high response rate. Out of the 987 approached, only 54 people refused in their study into the extended families in East London. And they were able to train interviewers as the interview was fixed and standardised. However, this will limit the data collected and to overcome this, semi-structured interviews could be used instead. Cicerelle used in their research follow-up questions such as 
what do you mean? At the other end of the spectrum is the unstructured interviews, a more free-flowing interview style, totally unstandardised and both the interviewer and interviewee can ask questions. This was a method favoured by feminists such as Oakley in her study of motherhood. A more unconventional method even included her being at the birth of some of the babies. In the educational context, we have Willis. He used group interviews for his research into working class lads to uncover their experience of school and the transition into the workplace. And finally, experiments. Rosenthal and Jacobson was a popular piece of research that has been repeated or replicated over 250 times. Brown and Gray, they used two actors. One was black and one was white, with exactly the same qualifications, age and gender. The only thing that was different was their race and how they approached the job interviews to uncover racism. Now, both Rosenthal of Jacobson and Brown and Gray, these you cannot ensure that all the variables were accounted for. So some will choose a lab experiment instead. So we've got Milgram. Well, not strictly a sociological research. However, it does allow you to explain the practical, ethical, theoretical issues of using a lab and often reasons why sociologists choose not to use it, favouring the field experiments instead. And a final method is the thought of the comparative experiment. This was by the big D. Emil Durkheim in his study of suicide and this was the research that Durkheim was using in order to show how sociology could be a science and this piece of research is perfect in a methods question but also in a debate question such as should sociology be a science and the value freedom debate. So massive thank you for watching this video. You should have plenty of examples of studies that have been used um, using the methods that we have outlined. If you've not already done so, please click like, subscribe and if you want to see more, um, leave a comment. There is also an additional handout which is linked below for you to print out and you can make notes of and add in the evaluative comments as well as you go along. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.